Um, this is my, uh, th you know, everybody have like those warning slides and disclaimers saying, you know, this is really bad, don't try this at home kind of thing. Mine's sort of the opposite, okay? Uh, I want you to remember when I'm telling you about this stuff, just remember this picture because I'm adorable, okay? I'm really a good guy. I'm not trying to do like, you know, kill everybody, steal everything, you know, unless you pay me to do it. So, so every once in a while, just remember the kittens, okay? It's like I'm, I'm perfectly harmless. So it's my reverse warning. Uh, I like to start off with, uh, I, I can only uh, speak English. I'm not going to insult your language by trying to speak it, so I respect it way too much. So I'm going to, but unfortunately, I talk really fast, and I usually go long. So I will try to work on both of those at the same time. We'll see how that goes. Um, so this is the title of the talk. Still everything, kill everyone, call it see. That's why you got to remove. That's why we're failing. You're telling the attacker exactly when to attack. That doesn't help. So we're going to work on our physical security and work on how our social engineering and work on the human layer. Uh, quite frankly, most of the stuff you can find on me, you can find on Google. So it's like more than I would actually want you to find on me, you can find on Google. So uh, that's the way it works. So uh, let's start off with just two things I'd like to get out right off the bat. My, I have two jobs. My day job is I'm the AVP of information security for a financial institution. I monitor firewalls, I work in a cubicle, it's like, you know, I, I do all the incident response, it's like, and I do all the, all the IDS stuff, you know, which is actually sort of fun. My main, my main job is defense. I'm the blue team guy, okay? But, uh, and these are a couple of pictures of actual engagements, me wandering around a parking lot uh, in someone's uh, facility without the security uh, talking to me. Me going on to a job interview, um, I did not get the job, but I did get their data. So, you know, sort of a win. So that was cool. So uh, my night job is I'm the uh, CIO of Strategy One Solution. I've written a book called Dissecting the Hack. It's like I uh, go and do these presentations. I do training, and I people pay me to break into their places and steal stuff and see what bad I can do. So I, I explained it, the best way to explain it is during my day job, I handle and I respond to incidents. At my night job, I create them. So, you know, I try to do, I try to do a little bit of both. Uh, this one, I love this, these are my two favorite ones because on the left, I actually stole a car in that shirt. And when I stole the car from the valet, I told him, I'm a liability. I come with warning labels, okay? And the second one, I was actually in one of the most secured facilities I've ever seen in my life, and I got in, and that's me with the valid badge, and I'm wearing the shirt, your company's computer guy, and they let me through. So that was, uh, well, awesome. So uh, I am a CISSP, sorry, don't throw things, but, you know, so there's my Sun Tzu quote because, you, you know, we love those. Let's go into the contents. Uh, the intro, so far, so good, because not too many people have walked out yet. Awesome. Uh, we're going to talk about the one fact uh, that I use when I'm doing an engagement, the two rules that I use, and then the three outcomes from those, and then hopefully a good discussion and uh, conclusion. I'll be here afterwards. If you want to come uh, and talk one-on-one, -on -one, that'll be totally fine. Uh, why am I doing this talk? Quite frankly, I did a last year's talk. I did one called The 36 Stratagems of Social Engineering. And I had a lot of experts and a lot of uh, advanced people and stuff, you know, were saying, well, Jason, your techniques are basic, your techniques are like, you know, this is not anything new. And my answer to that is absolutely correct. I am not an expert at this stuff. I am not training every day trying to be a better social engineer. I don't have awesome lock picking skills. I'm not great at breaking into a network. Every engagement I've been on in a social engineering engagement, I've been 100% successful, period. Every one I've gotten in, every location, from a biopharmaceutical uh, laboratory research facility to federal buildings to uh, financial institutions, I've gotten in. You don't have to be an expert to be successful. One of the things that we look at is we look at these high-level attacks and we just forget to understand that it doesn't take that kind of expert to break into a facility when your people aren't trained properly. This is a perfect example of this. 
I was going into an, uh, all these photos that you will see, if they're not Lolo Cats, or obviously not my pictures, uh, they're all taken from me during actual engagements. These aren't demos. These are actual live engagements that I've gotten permission from my victims, uh, uh, sorry, clients, to, uh, to take uh, pictures out of, okay, and use those. So I sanitized the pictures and put them in here. So here's the, uh, I went to the lobby of this building. As soon as I got in, I didn't have to ask anybody. I didn't social engineer anybody. I walked in and opened up the door. How easy it is to walk open and open up that door? One, three, five. The three buttons that are worn down. They were blaring. If that wouldn't have worked, I would have, I would have tried five, three, one, and then I would have tried three, one, five, but it was the first one. One, three, five, and I'm in. The look on that guy's face when I walked in to his office and stuff, you know, and he wasn't called or anybody that the receptionist didn't call him. I was like, yeah, how's it going? Uh, by the way, you might want to change that lock. It's like, uh, so a year later, I come back. I went through the same door, but I did make sure that this time they changed, uh, they painted the, uh, the lock a little bit, so it's not so obvious. Uh, so no lock picks there. Um, this one is my favorite key. I love this key. It is a forged email I put on an iPad. Why do you put it on an iPad? Well, because a criminal is not going to have an iPad, right? It looks official, and the, and the links are actually blue and hyperlinked, so this must be an authentic email. If I would have put it out on paper, anybody can copy paper, but how can you forge an email, you know, from the actual people's addresses? Just like this. I made it look like the, the owner of the new company. I did research. It's like uh, I found out who owned the company, found out what his company's name was, and I had him draft an email. He sent an email to the CEO of my victim's company saying that he was really pissed off about the network. He was really tired of how it was going, and he wanted someone there that he trusts to go out there, which is me. It's like to go out there and take a look at it. But he didn't want the CIO involved. He, didn't want, he wanted a surprise inspection. So I get up in there. I manage my way in, okay? And this is the one where I was actually wearing the your company's computer guy shirt. And I'm walking, I'm at the CFO's, uh, the, the chief financial officer's assistant's desk. And I did, I, I guess, something a little bit too noisy on the network. The IT guy comes over, asks me some questions. I show him the email. He takes me to his office. He calls the CIO. I explained to the CIO what's going on and what's going on with the, uh, and showed him the, and told the uh, IT guy about the email. Long story short, after that phone call and that conversation, the IT guy, escorted me through the rest of the building, getting people to get up so I can plug my USB devices in and do whatever I wanted to do. And every employee didn't question me because I had a guy right here telling them it was okay. It came straight from the CIO. So uh, here's another good uh, lock picking technique that I, I don't know that I just guessed. It's like uh, I was, at a, uh, I was at, going for a job interview and I was at the reception desk, and when I'm on these engagements, I'm a bad guy. I try to be the baddest bad guy I can be, okay? So I have to admit, I stole her pin. You know, it's like I signed in and, you know, tucked the pin because I'm a bad guy. It's what we do, right? And then I go to the bathroom. As soon as I get into a facility, I'm going to the bathroom, and it's not because of how much Pepsi I drink, okay? It's because it's a great opportunity to get lost and to wander. I mean, it takes me sometimes hours to find out where that bathroom is. And I mean, I don't understand it, but it works out. So I'm going to the bathroom, and I find this door. And this is like a million-dollar security system the security guy liked to brag about and stuff. And I go to this one door, and it's the employee entrance door. And I look at this, and I notice that there's this the door set, set up. It's got this little metal rod sticking out where the door slips into. And I was looking at that like, that's all? So I take the pin that I just stole, took the cap off of it, flipped it over that, and I just bypassed their million-dollar security system with a ballpoint pin that I stole from the receptionist. I waited 30 minutes, came back in through the back entrance. I had access. I've got awesome news for you. I don't care if you're PCI compliant. I don't care about your ISO numbers. I don't care about HIPAA or HIPPO or whatever they want to call it. I don't care. I'm not trying to audit your network, which is good, right? A 
Of course, the downside is I want to destroy you, period. I'm not trying to audit. I'm trying to cause as much damage as a bad guy would actually do. So everybody, everybody seen Serenity, the movie Serenity? I'm at hacker convention. Half the hands should be up. So it's like hopefully you have and you just don't want to you know, raise your hands or that you also understand me because I hope that works too or this is really awkward. Um, but those are the two quotes from the movie. I aim to misbehave and let's go be bad guys. Those are my rules. That's all I'm doing. Everywhere I'm looking, I'm like, what's the worst thing I could do with that? Look at that right there. Oh, that wouldn't be nice. It's like, that's what I do on an engagement. In America, this is a little bit more known guy. This guy is called Mayhem. So basically what I'm trying to be is this guy. I'm trying to be Mayhem. I'm that random act that you just didn't really want to happen to have happen that day. I happen. This is where I learned some of my stuff right there. It's like I had to give a shout-out to Johnny Long. It's like uh, he's got a great book on this stuff. Like I said, not an expert at this stuff. This is stuff that I've read, stuff that I've learned, and stuff I practiced uh, with. Here's an actual quote that sort of better simplifies and explains what I'm doing. The best way to get management excited about a disaster plan is to burn down the building across the street. From Dan Irwin, security officer at Dow Chemical in 2008. So I'm that fire. I show management exactly how bad it can be. But the good news is, is that you're paying me to do that. So there's confidentiality agreements. I'm not going off and telling everybody, oh my gosh, look at that. I just phoned them really bad. I'm not. I'm giving them a report. They're going to be able to fix it. I'm going to help them fix it. And also I'm talking to the employees that I compromise and explaining to them the dangers. I'm trying to train at the same time as I do this so they understand the, the threats. So let's start off with the first one. It's going to be uh, still everything. It's like that's not my picture because, you know, uh, there was a guy in Houston, Texas, that stole over, uh, about 10 years ago, stole over forty to $50,000 worth of equipment and personal belongings from downtown buildings. How did he do it? He dressed nice in nice khaki slacks and a collared shirt, looked all professional, and he had a cart. He literally had a cart, went grocery shopping as he stole everything, went to his van, put it in there, and came back. $50,000. If you don't think people are going to go into an office building to steal stuff, you are wrong. Tallahassee, uh, Florida, 2008, a guy walked in there, was spent an 18 hours inside the building. He spent 18 hours inside the building robbing them blind and he was wearing khaki shirts and a golf shirt but don't worry okay one of the things he stole was a suit so he'll be dressed nicer the next time he goes to rob them so he'll be even more successful so it's like so you got to be careful these things happen so this is what i'm trying to do i'm just going to try to steal stuff this is the trifecta i love this because i've got the phone i've got the laptop and i've got a badge thank you now i can come back in and steal more stuff that's really helpful. Um, this one is sort of embarrassing to me, and I'm a little ashamed of myself because I consider myself an ethical hacker. And I, I really feel bad about even admitting this. But, um, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed about stealing the laptop because, you know, it was right there for me, so I had to take that. And I'm not even talking about, you know, stealing the drill, drill because I might have something that's nailed down or something, and I want to take that too. Now, uh, I was a little hungry that day and I stole one of the cookies. I feel bad about that. But he said it was okay afterwards, so I'm trying to be a bad guy. It's what I do. So uh, here's a great thing. Look at that. They secured their laptop. That's awesome. Then they take the cable and throw it under the desk, behind the desk. Because what kind of security person is gonna actually pull on the cable to see if it's actually locked? I don't many security people that will do that. But I know bad people like me do it all the time. And we pick up lots of laptops like that. I've got over four uh, within an hour like that. Here's another cool thing. Oh, the, the frowny faces are to protect the compromised. So I, I don't want to show exactly identifiable information to people I pwned. I love that. This laptop was securely uh, attached to the desk. It had the lock on. But it doesn't really help if the combination is zero, 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 
zero. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try 1111. I'm going to try 9999. I'm going to try a one digit off of where it's at right now because sometimes they like to just move one digit. And if it's in the IT staff, I'll try 0007, you know, because they got that James Bond feel going. So it's like, so I'll try those, okay? And I'm usually at least 60 or 70% uh, successful at getting laptops like that. Also, when I go through an engagement, I'm not the, the, the honest guy that just, you know, just looks on top of your desk to see what you can find. I'm going through your drawers, okay? Well, that doesn't sound totally good. But I'm, I'm going through your desk. How's that? I'm going to go through your desk, and I'm going to find what I can find out. You know what I find out in a lot of people's desk? The keys to their laptop. <laughs> so then I just unlock the laptop, and I've got the laptop now. So that's, you know, cool. Um, let's see here. Um, I have to admit, yes, I stole her purse, but I had to steal the, come on. When's the last time you seen an iPod that old? I had to steal that too. <laughs> I mean, that's just all the retro feel for it, you know, so I had to go there. Um, Here's another trifecta moment. I've got the car keys, I've got the uh, purse, and I got the cell phone. Please note, there's her lunch. I did not steal that. I left it. Okay, I'm not totally evil. Okay, so uh, now here's one of those things where you better think about the kittens because you know what I'm going to do with those keys? I'm going to her car. I'm opening up her car, and I'm taking the keys back, putting them on her desk. I'm getting in her wallet. I'm taking her driver's license out. I'm waiting for her when she gets off of work. She's going to get in the car. I'm going to be in the back of her car with a gun, and I'm going to show her her driver's license and tell her that I'm going to kill her and her family, that my friends are, are at her house right now, if she doesn't go back in and steal the company's secrets, steal all their data, and with her access and stuff, you know, commit the crime for me and come right back out. That's bad. Trust me, there's nothing that I can say bad that I can't make worse. Okay? Every one of these situations can go worse. It's not just about the theft. That's what employees have to start understanding. So remember the kittens on that one. All right. This guy was very helpful. When you've got that many frowny faces on, on a slide, you're just screwed. Okay? It's just over. Sorry. Uh, I've got his whole identity. Uh, driver's license, his social security card, uh, his checkbook. I mean, he actually wrote me a blank check to, you know, steal everything from him, so thanks for that. Um, it's all there. His signature is on the social security card, so, I mean, it's, I can sign it perfectly. It's like, so, I mean, and trust me, his credit's probably better than mine, so, you know, that's really helpful. Uh, I stole the one car. I told you about stealing the one car from the valet. Well, the valet did something really bad. He told the other valets what I was doing, and he wasn't supposed to do that. That sort of pissed me off. So what did I do? I came in on a Friday night around 2 a.m. when there was only two valets, and I walked in while they were going getting cars, and I just grabbed, in less than 60 seconds, if you've seen that movie, it's like uh, I, I grabbed three Mercedes-Benz and a Beamer. Beat that Nicolas Cage. There's nothing like stealing four cars at one time just by going, yank, and then walking away. The look on the, I wish I could show you the picture of the, the security manager's face when I handed those keys to him. Because it was, I mean, it was totally, so that was awesome. So some of the things that we can do uh, for theft. Don't let people tailgate. I love polite society. Everybody wants to be polite. I broke into a federal building one time, not through the front door, which had bulletproof glass, a man trap, x-ray machines, metal detectors, video cameras, guns. It was scary. I couldn't go through there. I went to the employee entrance, waited for a guy and a girl. As soon as the guy opened up the door, I, opened, I picked up my backpack, and I held the door open for her. I'm a gentleman. And then I walked in right behind her. I mean, I can't be a bad guy. I held the door open for a lady. Come on, give me a break here. So it's like, so you got to be careful about tailgating. You don't have to stop suspicious people, but it's, you have to let every employee know that it's their responsibility and duty and part of their job to report it. They don't have to go up to the guy, you know, with the ski mask and machine gun saying, uh, do you have access here? You don't have to go there. But you better be calling security saying, I think you might want to check this guy out. So workplace violence. Yeah, this is the none fun part of the, the talk, so let's go here. Oh, now it lights up. 
I'm really screwed here. So, uh, so let's go to the, uh, this is a hotel that I did off the coast. All right, as I see it, I'm trying not to ignore it too much. Um, so here it is uh, off the uh, hotel off the coast. See the problem here? Let me give you a better view. I'm in their mechanical room at 2.30 in the morning, which is a bad sign, you know. There's no padlocks on any of the switches. I love switches. If it's on, I'm switching it off. And by God, if there's a red button, I'm pushing it at least twice. It's what I do, you know, it's fun. So I'm about to start a fire so I can kill everybody in the hotel. So, uh, but I'm not, I'm not rude. I'm not a rude killer, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to silence your alarm system. You don't want to wake up the guests and stuff with a blaring alarm noise going off and stuff, you know? That's just rude. That's mean. And, I mean, and, I mean if you don't like getting woken up to an alarm, I don't want to throw water on your face when you're sleeping. So I'm going to cut off your sprinkler system, too. So that way they don't get, you know, they don't get woken up rudely like that. So I'm sure that the smoke will gently wake them awake and stuff, you know, make them less panicked when they're burning to death. Uh, remember the kittens, okay? So uh, here's another good place I love to do death. The kitchen. Guy didn't even question me. It's like he was really sad afterwards. Here's all the little trays of implements of what I can do and who's ordered what right here. If I need to, you know, selectively kill somebody. But to bring that home a little bit, let's see here. This is a, uh, there's no law enforcement from Malaysia. Is there in the, in the audience? Okay, that's good. This is an actual video I took uh, through a Malaysian hotel. Hopefully they got the sound working. And I'm just wondering. I didn't edit this film, so it's like uh, because of the fact I didn't want it to uh, you to think that I got caught or something, and I just made it look good. This has got the mistakes as well. So this is actually me going down the first hallway and going into a storage room. I was like, "Oops, that doesn't look good." So I w walked back out. Oh, there it is. Great storage room, by the way. So. Now, if anybody gets seasickness, I apologize right now, okay, because it gets worse right about, you know, now. <laughs> so you may want to look away. I'm starting to get seasick. I don't even see So here we go. I'm going up to this room, and I see this room up ahead, and I'm like, this is Jackpot City. You know what's so awesome about this room right here? Here, let's show it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Right. There. Awesome. It's telling me it's a secured room because it's got a padlock for it because it wants to keep everybody out. And it showed me that they're idiots because they didn't put the padlock on. So, I mean, but what could you be storing that would be so dangerous? I don't know. Oh. Get it right there. Warning hazardous chemicals. I didn't come in with an Uzi. I didn't come in with a machine gun. I didn't come in with napalm. I made it in the closet. Okay. Now I have to go and deliver my, you know, my little cocktail of death. It's like, uh, so I have to go and find out where I'm going to use this at. I mean, that's going to take a long search to find a place where I could do some damage, right? Oh, no, I just turned around. There's the kitchen. Yeah, let's uh, let's walk past this guy. Everybody, say hello to him. Let's say hi. It's like, he didn't say hi to me. I think he should have. I'm in Malaysia. I don't blend very well in Malaysia, and I'm wearing a black shirt that says hacker on it. Like I said, I come with warning labels. So let's keep walking. Here I am going to the freezers. This is where I'd be poisoning the meat. There's all the fruit that I would be injecting with uh, the chemicals and stuff, you know, to help poison people. There's some rooms. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to test my luck too much. It's like, uh-oh, there's the electrical fire I'd start right there. But look, I'm busted. There's some more areas for the electrical fires that I would start because I like electrical fires. They're harder to put out. I'm going to use my social engineering invasive technique right now. Listen. Did you hear that? How's it going? Good evasive technique. <laughs> oh, they said it was okay. 
So here I go. One of the other things I like about hotels is their security of their uh, computer systems. Their computer systems are very secure um, to get the guest uh, information because they like to protect the guest information really well. So the computer system for the guest computers, are, they're not so too bad, right? Uh, except for when you put every guest and their hotel room number on papers for the kitchen staff. Thanks. <laughs> so at this point, I was thinking, all you're doing is seeing me walk around. That's not leak. That's not cool. It's like, you're not really doing anything, Jason. You're walking around a place you shouldn't be. So I thought, let's go talk to somebody. I decided to talk to the head chef and the manager of the hotel in his office while they were having a conversation. I asked him if he was using Wi-Fi or cable. I'm wearing a hacker shirt in Malaysia. His answer was they were using cable. If I wanted to, at that point, I could have gotten him out of his desk and I could have started working. But, I mean, I was polite. I mean, they're very friendly there. I mean, look at the smile on this guy's face. Oh, it skips a little bit there. Hold on. There he is. Oh, you missed a smile. But so there it goes. So that's that. And now they're going to come after me really quick. So countermeasures for violence. Set up codes if you think there's someone violent in your building. Have your receptionist go and say, the code word should not be, oh, my God, we're all going to die. That is a bad code word. Okay, I'm just saying. What a receptionist should say is something like, Mr. Periwinkle to the loading dock. Mr. Periwinkle to the loading dock. I just like that because there's a code Periwinkle going on somewhere. So, uh, so hopefully someone's using that one somewhere. And, uh, so, and make sure you're practicing routines. I went to this one facility, which I'm not going to have time to talk about too much, uh, where they didn't even test their cameras, and it turned out the one camera that I could have gotten into the building with was mysteriously turned off. wasn't working. So I wasn't the first one that had that idea. Go to corporate espionage, because that's always a fun topic. I hate people that uh, treat the environment badly. I'm an environmentalist. I'm pro-Earth. So one of the things that makes me so sad, it does, are all those trees that die needlessly because printouts get left off by the printer. How many trees have died needlessly because they forgot to print it out? Well, you know what? I'm not going to let those trees die in vain. I'm going to take those printouts from the printer. Heck, I'm so environmentally conscious, I'm going to take the printout that's still printing from it just in case you might have left it. So that's how, that's how environmentally conscious I am. And once again, that many frowny faces, not good. Secret documents that you need to shred. Where are you going to put those documents? I got an idea. Put all the sh documents that need to be shredded at the end of the day, put them in here so I know exactly where your top secret information is that needs to be shredded. That's very helpful. I don't, so many companies are doing that. So many companies are wrong. Uh-oh. My USB device, your workstation, that's not going to end well. But the worst thing in the workstation is, how about your exchange server? Trust me. I know where that USB drive's been. You don't want it in your exchange server, okay? That's not a good thing. And you're saying exchange server, how about your accounting server? Yeah, that's probably not going to be helpful either, okay? But uh, one of the things worse than that is how about putting an actual computer in your network? Right there, behind that, little Sony Vio. I can steal your passwords. I actually tried leave blank. I actually typed it out, bracket, leave blank, bracket, just in case that was it. But no, it was just enter. A biopharmaceutical research lab administrator, this was an alphanumeric special character password, and it was hard. So they turned it to welcome. All lowercase. I felt very welcome. The only thing worse than me in pajamas, my Pepsi pajamas, and trust me, there's people out there with pictures, is me in a suit. When I'm in a suit, you're screwed, okay? Because when I'm in that suit, I usually have this on. Thank you, thank you. So what are some of the things in the Vestidoom that...
That's not good for you. I've also improved the best of doom. I want to show you this one thing real quick. I hope I don't get into too much trouble here. I got this from a government agency, and I wasn't supposed to show this to anybody. And I wasn't supposed to, to acknowledge the fact that I got it from a government agency. You see this device right here? It's a keystroke logger. It defeats, it, it circumvents most malware detection, most antivirus detection. You plug this into the keyboard, they're not even going to know that you're logging all their keystrokes. Billion dollar worth of technology right here and stuff, you know. And now I'm, I'm okay, hold on, I'm joking. I got it off the of Think Geek website. That's how easy it is. That's how easy it is to get your keystrokes. To put this in an auditing term for some of the auditors out there, available at a Geek and Gadget website is a near certainty. Being able to log the CEO's keystrokes, yeah, that's pretty catastrophic. So that's how some of these things are. Some of the other devices I have, 4 gig USB audio video recorder. That was where I took the video off of, was my watch. I love leaving these things. 4 gig, 8 gig audio video recorder pins. Put that on someone's desk. They're not even noticing as I log their keystrokes. And I have extras. So I put those around there. That's not good. My favorite is the new Creeper box, the Pony Express. These pictures were actually taken at a bank branch off the west coast of the U.S. in their banking branch. I didn't come in there with a shotgun and ski mask. They know how to react to that. I came into there telling them I needed to uh, check their power regulations and stuff, and they're like, oh, yeah, come on in. They let me through the teller line. They let me through the, the back areas. It's like, and this picture, I got the manager of the branch to get out of the desk out of the way so I could put this behind her desk. That's a direct tap into the network. So uh, countermeasures, watch out for your, what you're printing. Make sure you understand what you're printing and who's printing it. So one thing, one thing I want to say before I go, because these guys are about to tackle me up here, and stuff. Because once again, like I promised, I run long, and the lights are blinking really bad. I don't. If these things like go too long, do they break? Turn my computer off or something? I don't like sticking out USB devices in my computer. Okay, but uh, but what I was going to say is. We tell users, if I told you you've never driven a car before and your first day of work when you got hired, I tell you, guess what? You also, part of your duties is to drive a car and do deliveries. Get in the car now and go to work. And I don't train you how to use the car. I don't show you the proper safety measures for that car. Who's the idiot? Who's the idiot? The person that wrecks the car because they had no idea how to, to drive a car? Or the person who told them to go drive it? We hire people all the time who've never worked on computers, who've never dealt with computers, and we tell them, here's a computer, start doing your work, and then we think they're stupid because they get infected, or they click on a link because they weren't properly trained. We need to train the employees. We don't need to just uh, talk down to the employees. We need to train them. So there we go. See, look, the guy's about to actually tackle me. <laughs> hey, any questions? Is it time for questions? No. Okay. I'm here everywhere. I'm going to be in the back probably and stuff, you know. So it's like if you want to come up and talk to me, I love talking, obviously. So uh, feel free to come up and talk to me, and we can discuss uh, further and stuff. So I'm done. Football.